Hello and welcome to today's unboxing and assembly video. In today's video, we're going to unbox and assemble the Vive Health four-wheel mobility scooter. This is a four-wheel scooter that can hold up to 265 pounds and weighs a total of 88 pounds. When fully disassembled, the heaviest piece weighs 29 pounds. As you can see, it comes in a cardboard box with some pallet straps. You will need something sharp to cut the pallet straps and open the lid. When you open the lid, you'll find a bag in the basket that contains the keys, a seat post pin, a tension adjustment knob, and the user manual. Go ahead and put that to the side. Go ahead and put that to the side and then begin to take out the different components like the basket, the battery box. It all comes well packaged. Just go ahead and remove each component. We're showing you here at the bottom of the battery box, there are some terminal connectors, which are very important. We'll show you how those work in just a moment. As you can see, we are just now we're removing some of the pieces of styrofoam that are stacked on top of the mobility scooter. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do after removing some loose pieces of styrofoam is locate the box with the charger. You don't want to throw that away or mistake it for a piece of packaging cardboard. It comes in a small cardboard box. There is a power cable that you'll need to connect. We'll show you how to do that later. We're just going to go ahead and put all of these items to the side for now and show you how to get the scooter out of the box. The first thing you're going to want to do after removing all of the excess pieces of uh, styrofoam and cardboard is to loosen the tension adjustment knob for the tiller adjustment feature. That knob that we just loosened by rotating that knob uh, counterclockwise allows us to tilt the tiller, which is the handlebar assembly, all the way forward or all the way down. And once you have it all the way up, you can go ahead and retighten that knob and then go ahead and just take off the bubble wrap bag that's covering the actual handlebar assembly. Once you do that, you can actually remove some extra pieces of styrofoam and then remove the seat, which is sandwiched between the tiller and the base of the scooter. Go ahead and cut that piece of tape, remove the cardboard that's used to protect the seat. And we're gonna show you now that the seat does flip up and down. It does have a little lever underneath the right side, which allows you to rotate the seat. And it does come with an armrest sleeve to attach your armrest, which we'll show you how to do shortly. The next thing we're doing now is rotating the box so that we can show you the easiest way to take this mobility scooter out of the box is actually to cut the front part of the box out completely. So take something sharp and carefully cut along the sides of the boxes. Try not to cut the scooter itself. And as you can see, the front part of the box just lays flat and we'll show you now you can roll the scooter out of the box, but you will need to disengage the brakes. So go ahead and get that lever in the back right and uh, push it forward. Then you can use the handle on the rear of the scooter to lift the rear up. And essentially you just want to roll it out of the box like this. There are going to be some components under the scooter. So you will need to raise the back up very high to roll it out. You'll see that there are armrests underneath the mobility scooter. They are packaged up with cardboard and bubble wrapping. So they are protected. Uh, the next thing to do is get the bag with the user manual. Make sure to read the user manual in its entirety for safety purposes. And in that same bag, you'll see there is a pair of keys, a tension adjustment knob, which is to be worked with the seat post, and an actual seat post pin to adjust the height of the seat post. You do have a total of three different slots, so you have three inches of range to adjust the height of your seat. If you're someone that's taller, you probably want to use the lowest hole or if you're someone that's a bit shorter, you'll probably want to use the hole that's up higher. In this case, we're going to use the middle hole, which is probably best for someone that's an average height. Once you have the seat post adjusted and secured, uh, you can go ahead and start to mount the battery. There are two metal terminal connection studs that touch up against the terminal connections located on the bottom side of the battery box towards the rear. There's also a little tension plate that you have to make sure you rotate so that the right and left side of that plate are actually on top of the battery box on the left and right side. And that's going to push down the battery box so that the terminal connections can meet with that tension. The bottom part of the battery terminal connections on the base of the scooter are going to be able to touch up against the terminal connectors on the top of the battery pack. Now we're going to show you the seat is very easy to install. You just find the bottom part of the seat that has the male connection point and just drop it right into the seat post. You will need to wiggle it a little bit and shimmy it down. Once it's locked into place, it won't be able to rotate unless you use that rotation lever on the right side. 
To install the armrest, it's very easy. You just loosen the tension adjustment knobs that are on the seat, on the armrest sleeve, which you attach the armrest rail into, just slide it in. You will have to loosen those knobs and then retighten to keep them in the desired width position. So again, you can actually adjust the width of the armrest by using that tension adjustment knob. You can slide the armrest all the way in or keep them out a little bit, depending on what's comfortable for, for the user, depending on what's comfortable for the user. Once you have both of the armrests in, you can go ahead and pretty much start to use the mobility scooter. We are showing you here that the seat does rotate 360 degrees. The armrests do flip up as well. Right now, the scooter is rolling back and forward freely, which means that the brakes are not engaged. You do need to engage the brake in order to use the scooter's motor and the batteries. So go ahead and put that lever into the drive mode position before starting the scooter or else it won't work. We're showing you now the front basket installs very easily with a set of rails and hooks. Just make sure that the rails line up with the hooks and just start with the basket up a little bit higher than the actual hooks and then push down. There's a little tab on the hook system that you push to release the basket when you want to remove it. We're going to show you now how the dash works. You grab the keys and make sure again that the scooter is not wheeling forward and backward on its own. You can adjust the handlebar position by loosening that tension adjustment knob and bringing it closer to you or further away from you depending on your preference. So once you have the tiller set at the most comfortable point for you or the intended user, just go ahead and grab one of the keys, put it in the ignition to the left. You'll notice that there is a set of lights for the battery meter. There's a horn button on the left. It has a loud horn. And on the right, you have the light button to turn the lights on and off. Just like most mobility scooters, there is a speed control knob which limits the top speed. And what's nice about these mobility scooters that have an ambidextrous lever system, as you can see, you can use your left or your right hand independently to control the forward and reverse motion. So you don't need to use both hands to drive it. One other thing is that these levers are throttle sensitive. So if I turn the speed all the way up, I could still make the mobility scooter move very slowly by just giving it a very light push on the throttle. As long as you're not pulling too far back on that throttle, it will operate at the slowest speed. As soon as you pull the throttle back all the way, it will start to speed up. One other thing that we want to mention is that that extra knob is used for the seat post. So before you ride your mobility scooter, make sure to install that extra knob right there on the seat post just for security. Even though the seat post pin is there, it does recommend in the user manual installing that knob. We're going to show you now how to disassemble the mobility scooter. It's done quite quickly. Just remove the basket in the seat. You just pull straight up. There's nothing to it. And then that plate that pushes down the battery box, you will want to remove that tension adjustment knob and get the plate out of the way so you can remove the battery box. And then you'll notice there is a round barrel connector that you will need to unscrew and disconnect in order to detach the rear part of the mobility scooter from the front. So go ahead and unscrew that little securement nut and then use the latch, which is a little yellow lever that you can get your fingers under to actually detach the rear from the front. There's a little hook on the left and right side, which drops onto a bar on the left and the right side of the rear. And once you have them detached, the front and the rear, you can lower the tiller and you can pretty much store this mobility scooter in the trunk of most small vehicles. The heaviest piece is going to be the rear, which weighs 29 pounds again. And we're going to show you now how to put it back together. So the first thing we're doing is raising the handlebar assembly, also known as the tiller. And now we're going to line up the rear side of the scooter, which has the bars that the hooks from the front of the scooter have to drop on top of. You will need to grab the scooter from the bottom, tilt the rear part of the scooter up a little bit, and then drop them into place. You will want to put that little handlebar down with the yellow grip on it, lay it flat, and then reconnect that barrel connector. Once it's connected, go ahead and tighten that connection nut so that it's all the way tightened down and secure and just reconnect the batteries. You will need to, once again, use that tension knob to uh, secure the plate that pushes down on the battery pack. We'll call it the pressure plate for the battery connectors. Once that's tightened all the way, you should have a connection with the battery, reinstall the seat by just dropping it into the seat post and reattach the basket. Taking this scooter apart and putting it back together is pretty easy once you get 
a few practice runs. It should only take about two to three minutes at most. And we're going to show you now that this scooter is great for someone that's about six foot tall, 210 pounds. It has a pretty good turning radius for a four wheel mobility scooter at 52 inches. As you can see, we're able to do a full U-turn here in our uh, showroom, which has a pretty narrow floor plan. It does have the lights, which is a nice feature. And the basket is much larger than most travel mobility scooters, which is a plus as well. Overall, we think this is a great economy class mobility scooter. If you liked this video and you want to see new videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to also leave any questions in the comment section below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.